Introduction. The character, Shang Chi, first appeared in Special Marvel Edition No. 15, December 1973, by Steve Engelhart and Jim Starlin. Shang Chi appeared again in Special Marvel Edition No. 16, February 1974. With issue number 17, April 1974, the title was changed to the hands of Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Amidst the martial arts craze in the United States during the 1970s, the series became very popular. It continued a 10-year run, including four giant size issues and an annual, until Master of Kung Fu No. 125, June 1983. Master of Kung Fu was, for some time, the third best-selling series of all Marvel titles. During that time, only Amazing Spider-Man and Ghost Rider sold more copies per month. While the Kung Fu craze of the 70s and 80s was certainly a contributing factor, it was not the primary impetus driving that success. The secret recipe was quite simple. A talented author provided relatively high-quality stories and a talented artist provided relatively high-quality art at a relatively inexpensive price. The secret to success in comic book sales is all about quality story, quality art, and price point. The legend begins. The series begins by introducing Shang Chi as a man raised by his father, Fu Manchu, to be the ultimate assassin. For his first assignment, a youthful and inexperienced Shang Chi is dispatched to London on a deadly mission to assassinate Fu Manchu's octogenarian rival, Dr. Petrie. This brings him into contact with Sir Dennis Nayland Smith for the first time. When he discovers the truth about his father's games of death and deceit, Shang Chi swears to oppose, denounce, and destroy the devil Dr. Fu Manchu. The Master of Kung Fu series was an instant sales success. Engelhart and Stalin soon left as the creative talent for the title. However, its popularity continued to grow once writer Doug Mensch and artist Paul Gu Lacey began collaborating on Master of Kung Fu No. 22, November 1974. Gu Lacey, a film buff, modeled many characters after film stars, such as Juliet on Marlene Dietrich, James Lana on Marlon Brando. Clive Reston occasionally resembled Basil Rathbone or Sean Connery. Richard Blaine resembled Humphrey Bogart, and Ward Sarsfield resembles David Niven. Mensch introduced other film-based characters, including one modeled after Groucho Marx and another modeled after W.C. Fields. Comics historian Les Daniels observed that, ingenious writing by Doug Mensch and energetic art by Paul Gu Lacey brought Master of Kung Fu New Life. This critically acclaimed run continued, with few exceptions, until Master of Kung Fu No. 51, April 1977. Gu Lacey was replaced by artist Jim Craig. Craig was succeeded by Mike Zeck, who became the regular artist with Master of Kung Fu No. 64, May 1978. Mensch continued for a long tenure. The title did not receive the same level of acclaim as the Gu Lacey period until Jean Day, who had previously been inking the book, took over penciling on Master of Kung Fu No. 100, May 1981. Shang Chi's long-running battle with his father ended in Master of Kung Fu No. 118, November 1982. Jean Day died of a heart attack after finishing Master of Kung Fu No. 120, January 1983. Mensch left the series after Master of Kung Fu No. 122, March 1983. With the main storyline resolved, Shang Chi retired to a passive life as a fisherman in the village of Yang Yin, China. 
The series was cancelled with Master of Kung Fu No. 125, June 1983. The legend continues. In 1988, Marvel published a new Master of Kung Fu story in Marvel Comics Presents No. 1 to No. 8. It reunited Shang-Chi with most of the original supporting cast. It featured Mensch scripting with Tom Grindberg penciling. In 1990, Marvel published the one-shot, Master of Kung Fu, Bleeding Black. It reunited Shang-Chi with most of the original supporting cast. It featured Mensch scripting with David and Dan Day, Jean Day's sons, penciling. In 1994, Marvel published a new Master of Kung Fu story in Marvel Comics Presents No. 156 to 158. It featured Shang Chi with Leiko Wu and the Midnight Slasher from Deadly Hands of Kung Fu No. 8, January 1975 with Carl Boller's scripting and Carey Nord penciling. In 1997, Marvel published a new Master of Kung Fu story in Journey into Mystery No. 514-516. It did not reunite Shang-Chi with the original supporting cast. It featured Ben Raab and Creative Differences Studios scripting with Brian Hagen penciling. In 2002, Marvel published a new Master of Kung Fu story in Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu No. 1-6. It reunited Shang-Chi with most of the original supporting cast and featured Doug Mensch scripting with Paul Gu Lacey penciling. Supporting Characters The series, especially as written by Doug Mensch, was notable for its strong supporting characters. As they evolved, these characters became nearly as integral to the series as Shang-Chi himself. Fu Manchu is portrayed in a manner most consistent with the Sax Roma novels. He's a brilliant and calculating master villain who aspires to rule the world. As the series progresses the character deteriorates, gradually losing his nobler qualities. By the end of the series, he is a pathetic figure, reduced to stealing his son's blood to preserve his immortality. He is currently known as Zheng Zhu. Other notable aliases include Mr. Han, the father, the devil doctor, Chang Hu, and Wang Yu Seng. Sir Dennis Nayland Smith is Fu Man Chu's nemesis in the novels. In the comics, he retains this role. His obsession with the villain often draws out the dark side of his own nature. In his better moments, he's a surrogate father figure to Shang-Chi. Ultimately, he's too caught up in what Shang-Chi calls, games of deceit and death, and fails in this role. The relationship is that of two flawed characters who feel strong friendship in spite of deep differences. Fa Lo Sui is the daughter of Fu Manchu. She's a villainess in her own right. She's not interested in the misguided idealism of Fu Manchu. She's a pragmatist, seeking the best way to power. As such, she shifts alliances often. Typically, she's an enemy of Shang Chi and company, but sometimes she's an ally. When last seen, she'd become a highly ranked official in MI6. She's currently known as Zheng Bao Yu. Black Jack Ta is Smith's aide-de-camp and a powerful giant of a man with a gruff manner. Though he's initially an enemy of Shang Chi, the two become friends over time. He exhibits the most obstinate traits of any character. He invariably addresses Shang Chi as, Chinaman, as a term of affection, rather than using his name. Despite this gruff manner and attitude, readers invariably feel fondness for him. It's one of the many successes of the series that readers are drawn to him in spite of his flaws. Clive Reston is a British spy. He resembles a younger and more vulnerable version of James Bond. 
While Bond is a successful womanizer and seems unaffected by heavy drinking, Reston struggles with alcoholism and a romantic rivalry with Shang-Chi. The resemblance to Bond is intentional. It's clear that Reston is Bond's illegitimate son and the grandnephew of Sherlock Holmes. Leiko Wu is introduced as a femme fatale, not unlike those of the Bond films. She's a beautiful Chinese-British woman. In the beginning, she's torn between a romantic history with Reston and her growing attraction to Shang-Chi. Though initially sarcastic and self-possessed to the point of arrogance, Leiko is actually a Japanese name meaning arrogant, her relationship with Shang-Chi causes her to become more contemplative. Shen Kue or Cat is a master thief. His skill in martial arts rivals that of Shang-Chi. The meaning of the character's name is both similar and opposite to Shang-Chi's name. He's a sort of mirror image, a good, bad guy, in opposition to Shang-Chi's, bad, good guy. While they share mutual respect, the two always find themselves opposed in both love and business. Rufus, Super Midnight, Carter is an African-American kickboxing champion and antiques dealer who secretly works for the CIA. Later, he leaves the CIA and opens a private investigation firm. His light-hearted nature draws out Shang Chi's sense of whimsy in his several appearances. Carter's unusual nickname is accounted for by his origin. A colleague challenged Doug Mensch to write a story using Carter's Super Midnight, a particular brand name of carbon paper, as a title. Awards 1977, Eagle Award for Favorite Continued Comic Story, Doug Mensch and Paul Gu Lacey for Master of Kung Fu No. 48-51. 1977, Nominated for Favorite Comic Book Artist Eagle Award, Paul Gu Lacey. 1979, Eagle Award for the Favorite Cover Award, Paul Gu Lacey for Master of Kung Fu No. 67. 1980, Nominated for Favorite Comic Book Writer, Eagle Award, Doug Mensch. 1981, Inkpot Award, Doug Mensch. 2010. Comics Bulletin ranked Master of Kung Fu 6th on the list of the Top 10 1970s Marvels, Doug Mensch, Paul Gu Lacey, Mike Zeck, and Gene Day. Nuff said.